An important part of your image making, mostly small devices, is what you use for backgrounds or how to view backgrounds. You could make some very interesting images, even more interesting, if you subtly suggest a certain kind of background that works, that's relevant. Your selection can really change your image. Sometimes you have to be kind of careful because the background can overtake what it is that you want to say, and we'll see that in a moment. So take, for example, this image that I made of an assemblage of pieces, and I took it on a surface against a white wall, which is a, what a lot of you do, and the issue for me is that even though you don't think the viewer sees it, the viewer does see the horizon where the two pieces of material meet. You might say, what's, what's the big deal? Well, you should start really getting into the habit of trying to edit out anything that is ambiguous or that is not giving the viewer a very clear view of what it is you want them to see. So it's much better to just keep a piece of paper handy and just simply fold it up towards the back and you'll get yourself a very nice background without seeing that distracting horizontal line. I really do suggest you, you start doing these kinds of things. It's easy with such small devices. Here's a device that was taken just in the lab, a quick image, and once again, the researcher knows what it is to look for, but you cannot expect the first time viewer to see what you want them to see. And so they do see all the mess behind it. So just take that piece of paper that we used before and just put the device on it, lean it against the same background that you had before, but this time with the paper going up, hiding that material in the back, you could see a much clearer device. Sometimes echoing what it is that you're looking at, it could be very helpful. Uh, I was asked to take some images of some copper sulfate crystals, and so I found a piece of copper, two pieces of copper actually, and just uh, suggested the presence of copper in this material. And here, with these plastic shapes that were fabricated in the lab, I just thought it would be fun to put it against a grid. Not a very clean grid, by the way. This was taken quite a long time ago. But what it did show was sort of helping to define these shapes and how those lines were changed when these plastic pieces were put over it. Here's an image I took for a book trying to talk about a drop of water, which is very complicated. And what I did was, remember we're using a 105 lens, focusing on the drop. So as you probably know by now, you get a very narrow depth of field with these 105 lenses, which is what we wanted in this case, because the background is blurred. The next image shows you the background. I mean, it, it's something I bought quite a while ago, knowing someday I would use it for a background because I liked the look of it. And I also knew that with a 105 lens, it would become a whole different Thing, as you see. Take a real hard look at that drop and you'll see that the drop itself became a lens that has focused the background. So it's a little playful thing that I forgot what happened, but it did. But here's a background totally out of focus that you want to be out of focus, otherwise it would just be too much of an image. On this one image of a bacillus on, in a petri dish, I just decided to layer the petri dish on a particular plastic blue, and then I put the blue over orange, and I just was having kind of fun. On this one, we're showing sketches of the CAD that was used to make these devices. And it's just a sketchy-like idea, which I like very much. I still like the idea of showing some sort of human hand to the fabrication of very high technology. I think that we should use more of these kinds of ideas. That's my point of view. And here is another, it's a wafer made into electronic device with one background. And I took the same wafer, put it on another background. 
and then again on another background and changing the angle a little bit so you actually see a very different color palette. And that's what I'm talking about. It's all related. You make one change in one spot and then it's going to change your composition or your point of view. It's just ongoing, the permutations. For this image, we wanted to show the ability to make these crystals and I decided to use some weighing paper against a desk and it just happens that the light is coming in from the window. I actually used it compositionally and as part of the background. And here we're seeing material that results into a powder and again I'm using weighing paper and make a sort of an interesting overlay of shapes because it's a pretty boring picture otherwise. I think it's a little more successful. These things are not easy to photograph as I'm sure you know. And on this, I use the reflective quality of glass. It might not be as successful as I thought because maybe you can't quite tell where the glass begins and the real slide with these. These are highly hydrophobic slides. That's why you're seeing the water bubble as it does. I don't know. It's something to think about. And here I used, I kind of was echoing the shape of this material, how it coils into these nice scoops and I decided to use a small table to echo the shape of the naturally occurring curves. Here's an example where I put the device on stickums, just a blue post-it onto which I, on that I put post-it on a black surface. I think this works. I think the next one where I used a crazy background, that I got a card that was kind of fun it's fun to look at the card, but not with the device on it. It's just way, way over the top and too much where the background just really gets in the way. I needed to take a photograph of this very small robot, flying robot, which measures about one centimeter long, and use the box, the, the plastic box that it arrived in as part of the composition, which I think fills the background in an interesting way. In this image, this was a very quick image that I just made just to see how what kind of depth of field I was going to get with these small devices. And it turns out that I sort of liked the haphazardness of this image. The background just was accidental. For me, it works. Maybe not for you, but for me, it does. Backgrounds should be part of your vocabulary. There is no question in my mind about that.